This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community, working in legislative, regulatory, and political arenas to promote the free enterprise system. Information at VAChamber.com. Virginia hospitals and health systems provide jobs. They support our economy and promote public health. Local hospitals are always open to help people with unexpected health needs. Having a stable health care network is vital. Virginia hospitals are our lifeline. It's amazing what my students with special needs can accomplish. Their pride is priceless. That's why I teach. Brought to you by the Virginia Education Association. Because a good education is good for everybody. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. and by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. Welcome to This Week in Richmond, and Jeff Shapiro, welcome back. I think it's been six months or so since we've had the privilege of having you here. Uh, hopefully our viewers all know, know who you are, uh, reporter and correspondent and columnist for the Richmond Times-Dispatch, and if they're in this area where they can pick up WCVE radio, they're used to your voice and hearing you on some weekly reports. I'll tell our viewers, Jeff, before we start talking, that we're talking on Friday the 24th of June. And the reason for telling them that may become apparent as we talk about some things that will be happening next week, uh, whether it's at the Supreme Court or other things that happen and the time when, uh, when you are on the Appalachian Trail or whatever. But uh, so we're talking before, and we might even start with the Supreme Court uh, since uh, I was hoping that we would have heard something yesterday on those last two cases, mm -hmm. the one particular pertaining to our former governor and the one pertaining to the abortion clinics in, in Texas. But I think those are the two that are waiting to get some word on Monday. The court will conclude its term on, on Monday, and there are three decisions outstanding, three. one of which is the Texas abortion case. The one of a particular interest to Virginians, of course, is the corruption conviction of uh, the former governor, Bob McDonald. Uh, it was argued late in the term, in, in April. Uh, the, the governor's lawyers, uh, uh, at least publicly, are very confident uh, that the, the governor's conviction will be overturned. Uh, that rests on the very friendly, surprisingly friendly reception uh, the governor received from the court. Uh, the member of the liberal bloc, Stephen Breyer, was particularly outspoken in his concerns about the statute under which the governor was prosecuted. Uh, that suggests that he might vote with conservatives to uh, overturn the governor's conviction. Uh, however, uh, this is a 4-4 court, and the absence of Justice Scalia means that McDonald loses a, a reliable vote, a presume, has lost a presumably reliable vote, and uh, there could be some unusual coalitions uh, within the court. Uh, Justice Alito is a former federal prosecutor uh, in New Jersey, uh, so he knows something about uh, busting uh, crooked politicians. Uh, the options available to the court are considerable. It could affirm the conviction. It could overturn the conviction. It could deadlock 4-4, the effect of which would be to affirm the conviction. Uh, it could reverse part of the penalty, it, which, could, which would require that the governor perhaps be resentenced. Uh, he was sentenced to two years, uh, and maybe under a resentencing would be looking at a very light, even a lighter penalty. Or how about this for an option? the court orders a new trial. Then the onus oh, would be on the yes. federal yeah. government to decide whether to it? go through yeah. this right. again. And there is yet uh, 
another option, and that is the court could say, we need more information on this case. We'd like it to be re-argued. And that wouldn't occur until the fall when perhaps, maybe, possibly, there might be a ninth justice. And if, and if that one happened, Jeff, and it was re-argued in the fall, could they even put off their decision until sometime in 17, or would they be expected to give a decision then? I don't think I could yeah. uh, speak to that. But I, I think it's yeah. safe to say that it's uh, almost two years since the governor yes. stood trial, and uh, he's had his uh, day, his two years, uh, in court. He's been free the entire time. Um, he would, uh, he would surrender to uh, the prison authorities if the conviction uh, is upheld. You know, the, the case that I hear practically nothing about. Maybe I haven't been listening to your, all, all of your shows, or, or even I know I read your columns every week. Is that other case of the, the former first lady, and I. My understanding is that's kind of put off until to see what the Supreme Court decides on this. Long, so long, long story short, uh, one depends on the other. So uh, once we have heard uh, the court's decision on the governor's conviction, they will start to, there, there conceivably could see, be some movement on Mrs. McDonald's appeal. So by the time our viewers are seeing this, um, either July 1 or July 3 or, or what, what PBS station they're watching, they will know the decision, we think, one of those many options that you've mm -hmm. laid out. Now, speaking of July 1, that will be the time that uh, the new laws that take effect. I was doing some checking and the, there were 800 of them. I don't think I could mention more than about this many. But it was interesting that the one who, that was the most frequently accessed, for those of us who follow things here at the Capitol, there's a place on the LIS system, you can go and see the bills, and you can see the top 25 mm -hmm. most frequently accessed, and that changes throughout the session if our viewers see it. The one that ended up on top right now has to do with the protective orders. And that's certainly, if not one of the top five, maybe one of the top higher than that, a bill to comment on. Yeah, and, and the idea that um, there, there are stronger standards for protecting uh, victims or potential victims of, of domestic abuse is tied into this other issue that's yes. kept us yes. preoccupied, and certainly since mid-April, and that was that is Governor McAuliffe's executive order restoring the civil and voting rights of more than 200,000 felons. And uh, a number of concerns, of, of course, have been raised uh, about the governor's order uh, by the Republicans. Uh, the Republican leadership is in the Supreme Court trying to convince it to order the governor to essentially cease and desist. By the way, I, I would note, and, uh, and if I've missed something, please point it out to me, right. that the Republicans have been much better about addressing the, shall we say, the, the frailties of, of the governor's order than addressing the issue of rights restoration. You know, what should be done in, in Virginia uh, when it comes to getting people involved or re-involved in the, in the civic discourse once they've completed their, their penalties? Uh, so perhaps Republicans will be saying more about that. Um, I suspect we will we will stay tuned, but um, to the issue of, of of domestic violence, the order that the governor signed is so broad that it has the potential. Republicans argue, as well as prosecutors in both parties, of accelerating the process by which felons could turn to a court for permission to acquire and hold firearms. Um, so th this has become a, a fairly potent talking point for the Republicans in the political debate over the, um, over the governor's order. Um, Travis Fain, a state house reporter for the Newport News Daily Press, had an interesting article uh, this week, uh, 
a spot check of, of court clerks uh, along Virginia's, on Virginia's peninsula, uh, they report no jump at all in, in applications by felons, petitions to a court to, to acquire firearms. So perhaps it's a red herring, maybe the story of, uh, of the governor's order isn't fully out. That's, that's difficult to believe. And the, the number continues to increase. The last numbers I saw are inched up above, I think, 6,000 that have chosen to register. Right. We're at about 7,000 about seven now. heading into the, the run-up to the holiday. Yes. And uh, it's interesting about the, the, the guns part and the, the voting part. Uh, a friend who worked in some previous administrations and in the office where these matters would, that felons who had, uh, were at the point where they could petition to get their rights restored, from his recollection, they all were petitioning because they wanted to be able to take their kids or grandkids hunting. Mm -hmm. They were not really petitioning so I could go out and vote. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the, the interest in the being able to have a gun uh, may, may be coming about. Uh, well, but on the voting issue, uh, one, of the, one of the concerns that uh, Bill Howell, the Speaker, and Tommy Norman, the, the majority leader in the Senate, uh, the, the lead plaintiffs in this action against the governor, uh, are making, that um, uh, this could uh, flood the polls with, with uh, presumably Democrat-friendly uh, voters and that this is all part of a very cynical scheme by Terry McAuliffe to tip Virginia to Hillary Clinton in the presidential election. That is uh, probably a bit hyperbolic. Uh, consider the experience in North Carolina, a state next door and demographically similar to Virginia. A couple of lawyers, one from the University of uh, Pennsylvania, another from Stanford, legal scholars as, as well, uh, looked at the felons voting rights mm. issue in mm -hmm. North Carolina through the uh, 08 presidential election when turnout participation typically peaks. What they found is that roughly one in three felons registered to vote but only one in five actually cast ballots. Mm. So I think it's unlikely that we're going to see large numbers of felons uh, showing up uh, on the rolls and showing up at the polls. But one of the points that the, the Democrats have made, particularly the, the governor, this is you know, his initiative, is that uh, for the most part, this is fairly popular. With, uh, with Virginia voters, that um, public opinion polls even suggest that it polls higher than the, than the governor himself. Mm. But I, I would suggest that assuming there is you know, some veracity to that, that it's largely a consequence of the, 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 the larger inattentiveness uh, of the electorate. Uh, the competition for voters' times is, is so acute. Uh, by the time the issue of, of voting rights for felons moves across their radar screen, they know little, if anything. And that what they're, they're saying about this issue is probably more of a gut response than anything else, and maybe not a fully informed one. In other words, yeah, if you do the time, you should be able to have your, your rights restored. Some of these complexities that the Republicans have been emphasizing, I don't know that they're registering with larger numbers, with large numbers of voters outside of the narrow Republican base. Sometimes shortly after the middle of July, I think is the time when our state Supreme Court has scheduled to, to hear mm -hmm. the arguments. Uh, if uh, our viewers missed your column from some time ago, they should 
search for it and find where you uh, talked about the different people who serve on the state Supreme Court. And my recollection was that um, it could certainly potentially lean in favor of Speaker Hal and Tommy Norman, but one doesn't know until they hear the arguments, until they, as a court, would decide. And I think it's very easy to look at the court through a political lens, a partisan political lens. All of these justices have been elected by a Republican legislature. And um, I'm sure the Republican legislature uh, hopes that the justices you know, re remember that. But before the substance of this issue can be addressed by the court, court has to decide whether it wants to address the substance of the court. There's a, uh, mm. a nagging but important legal question. Uh, it boils down to one word, standing. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying, do the individuals who have initiated this lawsuit, is there, is there any evidence that in some way they have been harmed, injured, uh, by the, the governor's actions. And um, how, uh, how has Bob, uh, excuse me, how has Tommy Norman been injured by this? That, or Bill Howell, their concern is that, well, this might somehow taint the vote. Uh, that, in the eyes of the administration, is, is certainly a stretch, but it will be for the justices to decide. So the merit of the issue may never be addressed because it's possible that the court could say, well, there's, there's no basis for this action. And so that, that point would be argued then before, before the court, I guess, by the attorneys representing both sides is the matter of it's certainly, standing. It's, it's certainly a point that, yeah. that will be made. And it is certainly uh, an, a, a means for the, uh, the court to get out of this right. issue very quickly. Yeah, I'm sure most of our viewers, but we'll make sure that all of them know that here at the state level, these justices are elected for a fixed term. It's not like the U.S. Supreme Court where they're there for life. But justices are elected by the General Assembly for 12 years. And the Constitution is very clear that judges shall be elected, that's the word, elected by the General Assembly. And the, the system for choosing and installing judges is unique uh, in Virginia. Only one st other state has a system that sort of approximates ours, and that's South Carolina's. I haven't looked at the numbers, but it'd be interesting. Over the years, some, I guess, justices of the Supreme Court retire at the end of their term, but probably a significant number stand for being elected for a second term. Well, this is, a, for the most part, a fairly young court. And you know, the unpleasantness over the uh, Jane Maram Rausch appointment, um, I think, is, uh, has concerned a lot of people, lawyers, judges, about uh, what they perceive as the uh, needless uh, politicization of the judiciary, uh, a process in this instance that really raises questions about the independence of the judiciary. Now, we're going back to those top 25 most frequently accessed bills, six of them have to do with guns. The other one that jumped out that I'd like to ask you to talk about the subject matter somewhat was a resolution. Only one resolution makes the top 25, Senate Joint Resolution Number 1, which was passed in the Senate that would have Virginia ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment. The bill lands in the House, not heard in committee, and dies. I hear a discussion, of course, I hear it year after year, that that will be back, that will, that will be, be back. And, and you're looking at things politic, do you see any shifting of perspective? I mean, it passed with at least two Republican votes. I didn't check everyone who voted. I think it passed 21 to 19 in the Senate. Do you see that as a as a, a, an issue that will be back in 17, if not in 17, back in 18? Well, you know, there are lots of issues. ERA is, is one of them, at least 
in this current setting that um, so there are some Republicans who feel that they have some latitude uh, to, to cast aff affirmative votes on, on issues that might otherwise rile the, the Republican base. And they, but they do so knowing that the House will, will dispense with the, the bill. Uh, it's difficult to, to believe that uh, the House is going to change significantly in, in tone and timber over the next year. There is that legal Damocles sword of continuing federal litigation over the makeup of the, the House districts, the House of Delegates districts. Um, that might be a factor uh, in, in the next year or so. The Supreme Court is, is, is prepared to reconsider uh, a, a uh, or excuse me, to consider a decision affirming those Republican right, yes. drawn. House districts, but you know ERA has uh, remains a very sensitive issue, um, particularly with uh, a number of uh, uh, liberal voters, certainly a number of uh, women. Uh, though it's uh, it is one that uh, Virginia historically resisted, and uh, despite its resistance. Um, or maybe because of its <laughs> resistance, you know, the the ERA never became became part of the Constitution. Jeff, before our conversation would end, we should ask you to talk some about upcoming elections. It may be as a fact that we have three sitting members of the General Assembly seeking uh, congressional seats, or it may be the the larger election in the eyes of most, and that is the uh, election of of the president in November, what uh, what's what's are you seeing through your lens? Well, you know, Virginia has certainly demonstrated, beginning in 2008 and again in 2012, that this is a competitive state at the national level. Barack Obama carried it twice. Of course, that victory in 08 was the first time since 1964 that the Democrats had carried Virginia for the presidency. Uh, those that that it is friendlier to Democrats is a reflection not only of this very significant growth that we are seeing that continues in Virginia, but significant changes in the makeup of our population. This is a much, much more diverse electorate now. And when turnout rises and it peaks in those presidential years, conditions tend to be friendlier to Democrats. Uh, of course, it's not at all clear how the Clinton-Trump campaign is, is going to un unfold. Uh, but there is a, a, a good deal of concern in some states where there are Senate elections, U.S. Senate elections, particularly other swing states, that pushback to Trump could cost Republicans seats in the U.S. Senate. Now, there's a possibility, of course, that we could see a Virginian on the national ticket. Tim Kaine is mentioned for the vice presidency. If he were on that ticket, it would be the first time since 1840 that a uh, and a, a Virginian had been nominated for the vice right. presidency. The last time was John Tyler, as in Tippecanoe and Tyler too. And 30 days into his term, he became the president of the United States. It was a fairly underwhelming presidency from uh, um, every indication. Uh, and if Kane and uh, Kane Clinton or Clinton Kane ticket were successful, there would be a vacancy for the U.S. Senate, and Governor McAuliffe would have to make an appointment. And then that seat would have to be decided in 2017, concurrent with the gubernatorial election. So the, the excitement just goes on and on with Virginia having elections every year. It's just yeah. keep on going. You follow campaigns as well as everything else, so that gives you much fodder for your columns and for your comments. Jeff, very much appreciate your, your being on. Any closing word for our viewers? Uh, a, a, a restful uh, summer. Uh, pay special mind to the uh, national conventions and keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of presidential traffic uh, through Virginia. Uh, so um, eat sensibly, get lots of rest, and stay informed. Oh, that's some good advice. <laughs> and if they're in the central Virginia area, 5th or 4th congressional districts, they have new candidates. If they're at the beach, in, in the 2nd, a new candidate. I'm getting the word that the time is up. So, Jeff, thank you very much for being on this week. Good to see you, David.
This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community. For jobs, the economy, and public health, Virginia Hospitals, our lifeline. The Virginia Education Association, because a good education is good for everybody. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you.